Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and today I'm going to do a book review and that book is, as you may already read in the title, Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. So this book was published in 1981 and this is the first book of the series about Hannibal Lecter. I think that many of you know this character, this very famous character and as many of you I first came in, cont in, content, in contact with this character by the movies. I remember seeing the movie Silence of the Lambs. I think that was the first movie that I saw and Anthony L. Hopkins portraying Hannibal Lecter. What is the name of the actress? Jodie Foster, that's right. And I watched that movie first. And then I remember watching Red Dragon as well. I'm Now I'm not sure, but I think that the movie of this one, The Red Dragon, came out years later, in the 2000s, I think. Because uh, Silence of the Lamb is from 1991. I wasn't even born, I just was born the next year in 92 so and the red dragon uh, let me check yes the red dragon just came out in 2002 so 11 years later and that movie was also with Anthony Hopkins portraying an evil lector and Edward Norton portraying Will Graham so the um, our detective okay so talking about, so that was my first contact, it was with the movies and you know, um, I was younger then, right? <laughs> and I always watched the movies accompanied, so I wasn't alone because I think if I was alone, I would be more scared than I was, but you know, so okay. As I said, this book was published in 1981 and as I was saying, it, this is an introduction to Hannibal Lecter and I didn't know this. I, I always thought that the first book was The Silence of the Lamb, but it wasn't, it isn't, I mean, you know, although you might expect that the protagonist of this book is as being the first one in the series is an evil lecture, that's not what happens. Or being the one that's being chased at least is Hannibal Lecter, but it's not. So in this book we have Hannibal Lecter imprisoned in a hospital facility of high security. And we are introduced first of all to Jack Crawford and Will Graham. So, they are FBI agents, at least Jack, Jack Crawford still is, but Will Graham, although he is young still, he has retired from the FBI. Because Will Graham is a um, well-known detective, we can say, because he caught two, two serial killers in his time, one of them being Lecter, Hannibal Lecter, but Will Graham, you know, was wounded by Lecter. He almost died. So when that happened, and also because of the other serial killer that he caught, he went to a hospital facility to receive psychological support. Um, and he, he stayed there for a while. But he was known to have, um, you know, a feeling, an uh, insti instinct to read the patterns and almost a, a sixth sense, is that how you say it? I hope so, uh, to who the killer was and 
Jack Crawford really admired him for it. That's why he, Jack Crawford, went to Florida where Graham lives with his wife and stepson to convince him to come back to, well, not really come back, but get into an investigation of another supposed serial killer. And they call him the Tooth Fairy because he kills all the, the whole families like he has killed already two in their house in the dawn. He kills parents, he kills uh, husband, wife, children, you know, it's really macabre. He, th he has the habit of biting their victims, or his victims, I should say. And it's a very peculiar type of bite, a very specific and characteristical um, bite. And so um, he's known for, to be the Tooth Fairy. And they are really, they have some sense of what he's doing and his patterns. But Crawford really wants Graham to get into the investigation and participate in the investigation because he thinks that Graham will catch the serial killer. Graham is in defense of doing so and Molly, that's his wife, really don't want him to go back and get into this investigation because although they only met after what happened to Graham, Molly knows and he has cars so she knows w what happened and w how he suffered um, because he told her the whole story and Molly is not really keen on Graham coming back to whatever investigation so she doesn't want him to go through the same thing and perhaps being in danger of you know something happening to him but Graham, you know, he in some way he's drawn to the, you know, that thrill of being chasing someone. And the case is already in two families. So he has a, a sort of um, idea, and also because Car Crawford told him what they have till that moment. So the things that they think is a habit for him or are recurrent in the murderers, in the murders. So Graham is drawn to it and he accepts. And so Molly is not happy with that, but she understands why he wants to participate. And of course, in helping to catch this guy is always a good thing, right? She understands, but still she didn't want him to accept, you know. And so that comes a point, you know, maybe um, 100 pages pass and Graham tells us in the ending of a chapter that he wants to see Hannibal Lecter. So he, end, he contacts the director of the hospital where he is imprisoned and he gives him guidelines to what he can do or not do and so on and he goes there and in some way Lecter was expecting him it's really strange and he has a demeanor that is really uh, somber and psychologically thrilling you know and Graham talks to him and gives him a, a a folder where he has I think pictures if I'm not mistaken now I don't really remember but I think he shows pictures and he has like um, data from the murderers and he wants him to give him advice first of all Lecter says to him that he wants to read the file that Graham gave him for an hour or so alone and so Graham gets out of his cell. Well, he's not in it because Lecter, I didn't say this, but Lecter is 
in a cell alone where he has access to uh, books and correspondence. Really strange, right? But yeah, he exchanged letters with other doctors because Lecter is a forensic psychiatric uh, psychiatrist, so he's very intelligent, really. So Graham gets out and he's in um, a cell alone, as I was saying, um, and Graham is out of it and he has like a drawer where people can put things there and close it and then Lecter has access to those things. And so that is how Graham uh, gives him the folder or the dossier. So Graham gets out of there and leaves Lecter alone for one hour. And so then he is called again and he goes in and Lecter gives him some pointer that he thinks that is happening with his killer. And one of the things that he says is that, is that Tooth Fairy is very shy and he has um, and he would like to meet him. And some of the pointers that Lecter says, Graham like uh, nods and you know affirms or agrees with it. But Lecter sometime later says that everything that he's saying, he already knows. But something that Lecter says is that he perhaps chooses the houses because they have um, closed background uh, garden spaces so the back of the house is um, is closed so it's very private because another thing that Lecter says is that he per perhaps is in sync with the moon he doesn't say it like I'm saying, but he gives the, the same pointers, of course, in, in, with the other words. Um, but yeah, and Graham takes that in mind. And something that Lecter says is that perhaps he like gets naked and goes to the backyard and looks to the moon, the full moon, you know? so. After that, Graham is, is, is expecting that the next murder will happen in the next full moon. So they are running against time. And Lecter, after Graham leaves, he says that he wants Graham to get in, uh, maintain, uh, maintain in touch with him. <sighs> like, really? Macabre, right? And <laughs> and Graham, I, I, what does he say? I think he he says okay, okay, but you know. And after that, Graham continues the chase, and something that Graham likes to do. So this is something that he did the first moment that he got to the place where the murders happen. He went to the house and to the houses, so the two houses, and he looked at the, at the place and went to the backyard and went to see where the killer got in and how he got in, with which uh, instruments that he used, and something that they concur between Crawford and Graham is that he knew how to get in. He knew the instruments or the equipment that he needed to get into the house without making noise. So they don't understand how he knew. Of course, perhaps he did homework, right? And uh, went to look the house um, before the murderers or the murders, I'm sorry. But one thing that they thought is that he, because in at least one of the houses, even from outside or the exterior, he didn't could understand how some doors or some windows, the system of locking that they have, or they had. So they thought that he has to come into the house before 
um, some some weeks before perhaps to know how what he should use to open the doors or the windows or whatever right but at least in one of the houses the the people that live there so the couple have exchanged the lockers of their doors and uh, he wasn't expecting that because he, he, he went with an instrument that he didn't use. Um, and in one of the families, one child, so he was in university, so he wasn't living in the house, so he wasn't killed. So he, he tried to get info with that, um, oh well, young adult, right? Something like that. If he wasn't in university, at least he was in high school, but he was away, okay? So, uh, and Graham tried to talk to him and understand that he, if his father or his mother had enemies or he, he, if they were in trouble with something or stuff like that. And he tried to talk to the lawyers and to the um, those family keepers to understand the things that they had in a house before and prior because one of the things that happened to one of the families is that three months ago or three months prior to the murder to the murder they they changed states and when they were in the other state uh, a fire burned or the or almost all their belongings so they didn't have photographs or videos or anything like that. And so that was difficult for Graham to do research about them. And one of the things that Graham and Crawford, Crawford thought was, were that, was that um, perhaps the tooth fairy passed to be a um, technician of uh, something, of a service, you know. So. Uh, and called to the house to get information or went to the house to get information um, about the house and see the house and so on and so forth. Uh, and they were thinking like that, but they went to the um, calls history and they didn't see anything relevant. So they w went to talk to the neighbors if they have seen a strange person walking to the neighborhood or um, watching the houses or something so they tried everything right so another thing that characterizes this story is that this is not a type of thriller that you are trying to find out who is who or which of the characters are the, the murder. So in this story, we are introduced to the murder or to the killer. Uh, and we have his perspective, his childhood, or at least a bit of it, uh, his, where he works, who he meets, a romance involved, and so in this story, at least is, this is my opinion and how I felt the story. This is more like if Graham is going to catch him, is is going to be able to catch him. So this is more thrilling because of it. In that, in this perspective, at least for me. Of course, I'm not going to say how this story unfolds, but we have turns in the story. There comes a point where Lecter will be contact, contacted by the Tooth Fairy. And why this book is called Red Dragon? Well, because that's how the killer wanted to be known. And it comes a point where the media will call him Red Dragon. For you to find out why, you have to read the book. So. Yeah, I think I'm not going to tell anything more about the story. I just wanted to say that um, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice surprise to get in contact 
again with this story but in a book format right and although i watched the movie it comes a point in the book that something happens that i wasn't expecting and then after the thing happens i remembered what happened in the movie but it was a i can say a nice surprise because this is about the serial killer but it was um unexpected we shall say at least for me <laughs> i'm not really good in guessing what is going to happen or uh, being suspicious about this or that i'm not really a good guesser should i say and i think in thrillers i'm always caught with um, misleads of the author so i think thrillers really work for me because i'm never expecting what is going to happen and this happened in this book of course if you have watched the book the movies i'm sorry uh, perhaps this is not going to be so thrilling but i think that is really worth it to read the book although i have to say i didn't rewatch the movie because i wasn't in the mood but is as i everything that happens here the movie is really faithful i'm talking this one the red dragon and how is he called ralph finds right let me check ralph finds right is awesome so ralph finds plays the killer it's not so really um spoiler because you know the killer all since the beginning okay so stuff that happens in the book happen in the movie i think the movie is really faithful as, as i was saying so if you never heard about this story and you never knew hannibal the cannibal i think that i recommend it yeah if you're not afraid of reading these type of stories ah one thing that i wanted to say is that the author although he hints not really hints he, he explains what he does but i have to say that i was expecting more more scenes of violence more graphic and it's not what happens in this book i think he begins to tell what he's doing but then it passes to the next chapter so you never really know what he did or everything that he did and um, although of course you will have horrific scenes throughout uh, in the book and violent violence or more horrific i should say so be aware of that but he not he, he not in he, he doesn't dwell on it okay so it's not really descri a description of the scene okay so yeah i wanted to say that and i'm really um curious about the next one in the series the silence of the lambs so because of that movie i don't really remember many things i have a more fresh memory of this one you know so if you're not a scary cat or if you don't mind to read this type of stories and watch that type of movies i really advise you to pick up red dragon and start the series and get to know hannibal lecter because although we know that he's a killer he's a psychopath so it's not to be trusted um he's quite a fascinating character and i think so as you could understand by now he's not the main character of this book although he gets protagonism protagonism in this book but he's not the main focus so i'm I'm trying to understand if in the silence of the lambs we'll we'll get to see more of Hannibal Lecter. So yeah, I'm going to stay here. I didn't want to make a really long video so I wouldn't bore you. And I hope I achieve that. I can see my screen because I'm filming with my phone so I have it 
uh, the other way around in filming mode. So um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I'll see you on the next one. Till the next whole month video. Bye!